After last year's lucky Bundesliga survival, we had to change things up. But with a limited transfer budget and no center backs, since Heinz and Odets left the club after their loan, we knew that we had our first crisis on our hands. So first, we brought in Hauke Wahl from Holstein Kiel and Andreas Maxel from Bondby to fill the center back spots. Next position that I then tackled was the goalkeeper. Yeah, I know, Riemann was our key player last year, but he is 35 and probably gonna fall apart soon. So welcome our new starting goalkeeper Joel Gatterol, that also joined on a free deal. Next I then went headhunting in the two relegated sides and picked up two amazing players. From Augsburg center midfielder Arne Meyer for 2.5 million and left wing all rounder Buona Sosa from Stuttgart for 2.6 million. To round things up I then went ahead and got Sebastian Esposito on loan to open up my plan 4-2-3-1 tactic. Obvious to fund all this, we had to let go of some players. Most notably from Riemann to AGF for 650k and first of all also to AGF for 230k. Also our captain Anthony Lucia wanted a new challenge and moved over to Norns. And then there was Costa Stavlitetis. Well, there was Costa Stavlitetis. Surely no world beater than Sphere Window, but my hopes are still high that we can finish the season in a mid-table place even with a 350 to 1 odd. To start things off, we then had our DFB Pokal first round at the 5th division side FK Pirmasens, which we swooped out of the way with an easy 4-1. With this moral boost, we then went into our first Bundesliga tie of the year against Wolfsburg. An absolute boring game that got decided by a ref via a dodgy penalty call. Surely not how I expected the season to start. The next two games also weren't better, since we then had a two more uninspiring losses, a 2-0 against newly promoted Hamburg and a 2-1 against Gladbach. To make matters worse, Asano then insured himself for 6-7 to seven weeks, which meant we needed to get another winger in on deadline day. So let's welcome our new right winger Matthias Soli, that comes in on loan from Juventus Turin. With this horrible start, I then totally went downhill and got a new assistant manager to show off my madness. Well. Welcome Ole Gunnar Socha. At least when I get fired they're gonna have a, in quotes, decent coach. But the madness didn't stop there, since we then had a total breakdown against Bayern. Garol was so horrendous that I even subbed him out at a half time against our striker Hofmann. I don't know, this season is soul draining. We then had finally our first victory of the season against Hertha. Nothing special, but at least we won our first game of the season. It took us just five games. This season is a total breakdown. With this high, we then went directly backwards. Why? Well, we lost two out of the next three games and only trod lucky against Bayer Leverkusen. I have to figure something out. If we continue like this, we are gonna go down and I will probably get sacked and the series would be over. Can't let that happen. Maybe we can get a turnaround against Freiburg. But of course we had to start horrendously into the game and Grigoric already got Freiburg into the lead just 30 seconds after kickoff. After that goal, we slowly got back into the game and took control of it, but we just couldn't score at all. Thankfully, Hofmann then finally got us the equalizer in the added time of the first half. So with a good feeling we can head into the second half, where we tried hard to get the second goal, but we just couldn't get it. And obviously FM has to kick after me when I'm already down at the bottom. And Grigoric scored in the last chance of the game to the 2-1 end score. Thankfully we then had a Bundesliga break and had our second DFP Pokal game. This time against the second division mid-table team Arminia Bielefeld. We started things off like always and gave Arminia the lead. Thankfully we then got lucky, just a few minutes later when Ganvula equalized. After halftime we then finally got into the game and thanks to a pen the lead of the game. But we were not finished yet and went into fiesta mode. First we landed a double strike thanks to Esposito and and Fiace. Arminia also want to take part and also got a goal in a, that 3 minute span. The last 3 minutes of this game is the save in a nutshell, you never know what you get. But at least we got a win out of this fiesta and went into the next round of the cup. Obviously we couldn't get our rhythm and lost the next 2 games. And one of them was even soul crushing, since we lost 2-1 in our 6 pointer against Nuremberg. A freaking team that didn't want a single game until this point. The only thing that I understood is why Gatorol was a free agent. He's just garbage and if I can get a goalkeeper in general window, I'm gonna throw my organs at him to pay him. So after trying my best with my own new tactic, I felt defeated again. For the sake of the series, I went on FM base and downloaded the tactic. That tactic has to work, since we face now three six-pointer games. It seems like I downloaded the right one and won our first game with it against Werder. With that moral boost, we then went into our second six-pointer game. 
against our Union Berlin, where the tactic shined and we swiped the floor with them. We started things off in the 17th minute when Ganbulla gave us the lead. We then made the game clear in the second half, when we had a double strike shortly after the break, thanks to Erman and Ganbulla. Ganbulla then also wanted to get a hat-trick and got his third goal of the day in the 77th minute. But we weren't finished yet and managed to get even the fifth of the day thanks to Hofmann in the 85th minute. With this bang of a win, we got hopefully some momentum, but for me, it felt bad. I personally want to create a tactic that wins over the series, not just download one. But I just cannot figure out how to deal with such an underdog team in NFM23. And I tried everything, from low to high press, from slow to fast. I need to figure it out, otherwise I'm gonna get mad. But no time to think about that, since we face another 6 pointer match. And we won it! Holy moly! How good is this tactic? With this we closed the gap to the midfield down to 1 point, in exchange for a lot of dignity. Next game was then a destruction, but not for us. We demolished Cologne in their stadium 5 to 1, and Ganvula, the showmaster of this season, topped his form up with an easy hat trick again. And I have to say, the first goal was one of the best runs I saw from a striker in FM23 so far. Then our second Cloa player of the season, Arne Meyer, got his first goal for the club just a couple minutes later. Deep in the first half, we then also got our third of the day via a corner where Maxu came free to a header and easily pushed the ball into the goal. Shortly before the break, Anvula then destroyed the last hope of Cologne when he scored his second of the day. After the break, we then slowed down a bit and of course caught an easy goal from Cologne. But I didn't have to worry since Ganvula gave them a devastating blow again when he secured his hat-trick. We are in form right now, I hope we can keep this momentum. And obviously, we didn't and promptly lost our next game against Frankfurt, which was also the last game before the winter break. Over the winter break, I wanted to create my own tactic again, to feel better and when testing. I simmed several testing years in testing saves. In the end, I came up with a narrow 4-3-1-2, where I tried to get stability from the three DMs, while still being offensive thing to the two Segundo Volantes. I know there are still some gaps and I need to find a good CM period of it, but otherwise I'm happy. But I digress. To use this tactic a bit more effectively, we need some new players. And thankfully, the window transfer window is open. And I tell you, that window was a freaking window. We started things off by selling a bunch of backup players. Christian Gamboa and Daniel Soraz for around a total of 60k. Both of them slowly faded out of the squad and wanted a new challenge. Also, Patrick Osterhage signed a pre-contract with Augsburg, which I turned into a transfer, which got us another 40k. And then to top it off, Erhan Masovic for 1.1 million to Liege. So all in all, a decent amount of money for players we wouldn't use anyhow. But it wouldn't be me if I wouldn't splash the cash instantly. To total up, we signed 7 players over the next 2 weeks. Yeah, I know. Kai Jäger, a 16 year old bargain from Burghausen for only 10k, not a player for now, but we should keep an eye on him. Then we loaned Issa Kabora from Man City to fill out our right back situation and went ahead to brought in another keeper on loan to create a fight for the position. I know Gadarol played really well in the last games, but still, the paint sits deep. We then also needed some new center mids for the new tactic. First, we signed Martin Rabunal, a 29-year-old free agent from Uruguay, and loaned Viktor Janssen, a decent playmaker from Red Bull Salz. But we weren't finished yet, since there was one certain player that was annoyed about his club. Our kryptonite from last season, Rodrigo Salazar, a technical beast of a player, which was payable for us. So I tried my luck and asked for a loan, with a buy clause. And we got him. If we stay up, we get him for only 2 million. What a deal for us. On deadline day, I also kinda panicked and got our 7th player in, since Maxi decided he couldn't play football anymore. We need a good center back that is cheap and thankfully, an agent just sent me a loan offer for Leon King, a 20 year old no nonsense center back from Rangers, that is strong in the air and can tackle like a Sunday league player. Hopefully he can break some legs. With this shenanigans over, we then finished up the transfer window. In my opinion, the better window from both. Hopefully this madness can save us from relegation. But can you remember when I talked about momentum? Well, we may have got a 2 all draw against Wolfsburg, but directly lost 3 games in a row after that. First a 6 pointer against Hamburg, then against Gladbach, and to top it off, we had our game against Bayern, where we also got stomp again. Yeah, I think my sneaky introduction of my new tactic didn't work out, since we lost all games since then. But I wanna stay with it, and I don't use the cheat route. And since I'm stubborn like that, I hopefully stuck with it in the next game. The cap game against Hannover. A game that was a total rollercoaster. The game started off 
slowly. And the first highlight was deep in the first half. For Hannover of course. And of course it was directly goal for them. Thankfully Ganvula managed to equalize just before the half. But it didn't change our playstyle at all. We weren't creative enough. And Hannover had a game in hand. We changed showed in the 59th minute when Harvard Nielsen used his mistake from Val to bring Hannover ahead. After that the game was dead. Hannover was okay with the score and we couldn't create anything. But then the 19th minute came around and Gadwola didn't want to lose. So he scored in the last minute to equalize and bring us into extra time. That man needs a stager in Bochum. And he wasn't finished yet since he then also scored his third of the day in the 110th minute to see the deal. This wasn't a team effort. This was just a carry by Gadwola and I love him for that. With that carry, we somehow advance into the next round of the DFP Pokal. Maybe we can dream of another final. And maybe we can carry this moral boost into our next game against Hertha. A must win game. Well, we started things off when Stöger got us ahead in the 10th minute. But couldn't keep our head in the game and gave away a double strike shortly before the half time. I had to change things up and since I got desperate, I decided to drop our strikers and let Salasa and Zuli play this position. Even when they don't know the position. Well, well, well. Salazar stepped up and showed why I regard him as a game changer and scored a double strike shortly after the break, which kinda destroyed the moral of Hertha, which sealed the deal for us. Maybe my new tactic is actually decent and if it is decent, it has to show in the next game against Dortmund. We were stable in the back in the beginning, but couldn't get the ball forward. But as bad as we are in creating chances, as bad was the day of Kobel, since he gave us the lead when he missed the pickup in the 25th minute. With this goal, we got more and more into the game, and even thanks to Ganvula got the 2 0 lead in the 56th minute. Dortmund fought hard, but it just wasn't their day, and Gadarul is finally showing why I picked him up instead of Riemann. With this win, we are now 12 points clear of the playoffs. For goodness sake, how bad are these bottom three? We are playing horrendous, but these guys are in just a league for themselves. But I had to jinx myself and we lost the next two games. Thankfully, we then had the next cup game. And if we can do one thing, then it's playing cup matches. And got an easy 3-0 victory against Hoffenheim. In the 37th minute, Kovnagy gave us a lead. It took us then deep into the second half to see the deal, with a goal from Ganbulla in the 75th minute. Leon King then got his first goal of the club in the 86th minute to kill all doubts. But it seems like we party too hard since we then lost against Freiburg. But I tell you, it was a banger of a game. And since we love open banger matches, we had a replay of it just a week later against Mainz. But this time, we were the lucky winners, thanks to goals from Maya, Kovnaki and Ganbula. In the end, this cost us a lot of stamina and we plummeted into a form dip and got only one point of the next three matches. Also, we lost again against Nürnberg. How can we lose against such a bad team? With this horrendous form, we then headed into the DFB Pokal semi-final, where we faced... Bayern. The replay of last year's final. Hopefully we can get something out of this year. And this time we started well into the game, when we got the lead deep in the first half, thanks to Wahl. Now we had to get this lead just over the next 45 minutes. Easier said than done. In the beginning of the second half we tried our best to keep ahead, but Bayern is Bayern and we just cracked at a certain point. Bayern used this and did a double strike thanks to Upamecano and Coman. After this double strike we fully lost the grip of this game and Müller then finished us up in the 69th minute. That's not nice. But to be fair I didn't expect anything out of this game anyhow. Where we had to show up was in the next Bundesliga match since we had an opportunity to make the Bundesliga survival clear. And oh boy oh boy one guy was ready for that. And no it wasn't Ganvula this time. Kovnagi started things off and brought us into the lead. He also got us our second goal, just at the beginning of the second half. Then Maxi started to fight for his position and got us our third goal of the day. And to top things off, Kovnagi then scored his third of the day to get his head So another year of struggle is over and we secure another year of struggle. But we still had three games left and maybe we can solidate some crowd. But like always after a high, we had to crash down hard and lost to the nearly already relegated Schalke side. That move thanks to us towards the playoffs. <sighs> then we got the last win of the season against Cologne, thanks to a last minute goal from Salazar. Oh, by the way, this means Salazar is gonna stay at Bochum for 2 million. What a see from us. So the first summer transfer is in. The last game of the season was obviously a loss again. We just couldn't get consistent form this year and only survived thanks to the bottom three that played in a different league. We even lost four points compared to the last season. If we don't want to chase our tail for the next 10 years, I have to bring better players in. So 
time to swoop around national teams for some bargain players. This time, I also don't want to predict anything for next season, since we saw where we headed this episode. The only thing that I can tell you for next season is that I want to commit to the 4-3-1-2 tactic since we saw in the later stages of the season that it can overperform for us. Thanks for watching the second year of madness and thank you for patiently waiting for this episode. Somehow we turned things around in the end and I hope you enjoyed this meltdown of season. I also tried to shorten our videos up a bit to make them a bit more digestible since we only have to survive in the Bundesliga right now. If you have any criticism or improvement ideas, let me know. I want to make these videos as best as possible. Have a great day, take care of yourself and hopefully I see you in the next episode.